Okay, so today apparently it would be 90 days since the uh, three-year anniversary of the creation of Spacehawk. And I happen this year to have been incorporated as an LLC. First concern, I was incorporated as an LLC in Delaware. Why? Because I had read through some changes that had happened legislati legislatively in the state of Delaware, uh, specifically around its telecommunications. Changes that had happened throughout uh, the last 20 years, actually. And after reading through those changes to the telecommunications legislation in Delaware, I believe that part of my business model might actually be best served by some of the things that went into effect as part of the telecom changes that happened in the state of Delaware. I have notes, um, handwritten notes, they've not been typed up, specific to my research connected to the legislative changes that happened in the state of Delaware regarding telecommunications. Now, this may involve in some matter, way, shape, or form, some form of recovery uh, concerning the theft of past intangible personal property and or other sorts of processes regarding disgorgement and or some sort of uh, decommissioning concerning technology that may have been able to illegally avail itself of R&D connected to some of the things that these changes in the telecommunications uh, laws of the state of Delaware imply. Uh, and I know that. Uh, however, uh, I was willing to kind of make the time and to try to comport myself in a manner that would allow for that eventuality. Secondly, my understanding is that under the uh, helm or under the leadership of a former attorney general, there was an effort that had been uh, put into effect uh, to move forward uh, coming out of the attorney general of Delaware's office uh, in consideration of certain kinds of uh, uh, priorities that I believed were not only evident in terms of uh, projects he had been involved with or uh, focuses that he had taken during his administration, uh, which I did not find out as much about until later. I uh, did not uh, get the uh, access to the first uh, you know, primary reference materials on that. But what I did have access to was information about cases that went before the uh, Delaware court system, as well as uh, information about certain things that had happened uh, regarding some of the major cases in the state of Delaware for a particular time frame. And despite the fact that that attorney general ended up dying, under uh, circumstances that are connected to other matters of concern that are part of my investigations and my uh, efforts at trying to prosecute criminal charges. There is also the fact that I believed he had um, and they had uh, taken on a particular kind of priority, especially in consideration of uh, other matters that was very comparable and complementary to what my aims were, not only at this time, but my aims have been pretty much my entire adult life. Uh, and so I was hoping that by incorporating in Delaware, I would be able to participate and, and also be availed of some of the benefits that came with understanding that for a very important period of time, the state of Delaware was under the leadership, uh, at least through the Attorney General's office, and as was reflected in certain elements of the uh, court process, of somebody that had uh, political aspirations and uh, moved on them in ways that I, I felt I would have uh, been happy to be associated with as somebody that was incorporated therein. Now, there's, you know, a lot goes on on a lot of levels in a lot of different states and in discussions around interstate commerce and what it means to have your incorporation uh, formally in one state and to be doing your primary business operations in another state and how that may impact your uh, capacity to participate internationally. And I understand that. But like most small business owners and most first-time business owners, um, this is something I would be learning about. And the idea would be that I would be able to learn about it with other people. As a matter of fact, in March of 2017, when I modified for the state of Texas, my plan, which was both a political organization, a plan for political organizing, but that plan for political organizing also acknowledged the importance of potential incorporation as a way to accomplish a, a, a protection of our property. And in protecting our property, and in protecting our, that included our intellectual property, and that also included our capacity for us to be able to uh, address uh, misrepresentations uh, that had happened in it previously that had allowed for us to have our private property and our personal and intangible and intellectual property divested of us. 
and put into circulation in manners that were illegal and fraudulent. And so in that consideration, one of the things was an understanding that as a small business owner or an independent uh, uh, corporate person, that we would have not only access to certain legal protections, but we'd also have access to certain manners in which we could engage as a community and grow together. And so one of the reasons why my original proposal, I said that one of the things we were going to have to do is discuss with each other the understanding of whether or not to get uh, an employee identification number in terms of were we going to be sole proprietors or were we going to contract with other people or were we actually going to get an employee identification number in order to determine whether or not we wanted to hire people and of course hiring people entails all kinds of other matters but this is something that for that particular uh, organizing effort which was a political organizing effort that understood business and corporation in particular manners as being a way to protect our interests and that's one of the reasons that was put in there for consideration we would have to talk to each other about it in order to determine whether individually or collectively those were the kinds of uh, tools we wanted to use in order to organize. So that's why I say this and understand as I do, I have been served no formal notice for any um, effort to impugn the character of uh, Spacehawk LLC. Uh, I have uh, attempted to file charges, um, however, and I have let people know that I'm incorporated. One of the things that Spacehawk LLC would have done, and that is doing, is uh, moving forward on trying to provide protections in regards to, as well as redress for past abuses of my study, not only of, of non-destructive testing, uh, which was done here in Texas, but also to understand how the, the things that I've learned about through non-destructive testing are relevant to past work products and past efforts that I've made, including uh, in terms of my uh, domestic uh, uh, activities as well as my travel internationally that were allowed to be dispossessed of me and were allowed to be put into an illicit circulation so that others could claim it illegally and misappropriated for other things. Now you've got to deal with the fact that part of what you're dealing with is a reclamation effort and a recovery effort and you want to do that understanding that there are some very serious matters to contend with and that uh, whoever it is that you're going to be dealing with is going to be availing themselves of what they understand to be their legal protections. But then you also got to deal with the fact that it's not just about using uh, LLC to be vindictive. Understanding is that there are hopefully actual places to engage and to invest. Uh, I will say and will acknowledge that the uh, business model or the uh, incorporation model that I decided to pursue with Spacehawk LLC was one that was based on my experiences in Texas. But prior to that, I had um, designed a potential business model in Chicago, Illinois, that was based more on uh, my associations with what was possible in Chicago, Illinois specifically. Uh, this was uh, relevant uh, in particular in connection with concepts of fixed assets that could be identified for acquisition at the time in order to provide a foundation for that particular kind of incorporation and also an understanding of the kind of uh, incorporation structure to pursue because the understanding was that it would be specifically about incorporating as a cooperative and subject to the terms of uh, various concepts of what legally and also ethically and communitively uh, qualifies as a cooperative. That is not what I chose to pursue with Spacehawk LLC. It is not the kind of organizing or political organizing model I proposed in Texas to other people with whom I had hoped to uh, engage as business partners. Uh, the specific elements of the cooperative structure were to be part of the discussion we were going to have with each other as we were in the process of incorporating and then dealing with both the uh, recovery efforts that we needed to do, um, which there is a specific constitutional process with which one can uh, pursue that in the state of uh, Texas, um, and then also um, addressing factors connected to uh, what it means to be actually engaging in various kinds of business endeavors according with what we would like to do individually and collectively. Uh, so in terms of the actual kind of business um, uh, matters that Spacehawk LLC was going to engage in, uh, the majority of them were focused on applying uh, the technologies I had studied regarding non-destructive testing into specific ideals uh, for potential incorporation. I had more than one specific business plan 
uh, one of which was um, called uh, Space Hawk LLC or Space Hawk specifically, and then I had another one um, that I had entitled um, uh, 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 At Home Now. Oh, sorry, At Home Now was the first one. Uh, it was the name of the original business model. Um, the, the one that, then there was another one, All at Once. And um, in court, including in these were concepts of needing to work around uh, cyber technologies concerning specific kinds of apps with the understanding that hopefully these apps could be developed with specific kinds of networking and access to publicly accessible information, a sort of a particular way to categorize and organize a, a public database information to make available certain uh, statistical information and metrics so that as an individual, one could identify it. And the hope was to work with particular agencies. My hope was originally was to work with local fire departments to develop a uh, form of indexing that individuals who are involved with community investment up to and including community investment that would have to deal with uh, retirement systems or would have to do with uh, ways to invest around uh, provision of basic resources would be able to be able to use that as a primary reference point when it came to collective or community investment. So uh, there's nothing about that that's illegal, but part of what it would involve would involve people, either me personally or people in my network, that were licensed to uh, deal with uh, very important financial matters, uh, including securities uh, related to either securities brokering or investment management, and also having to deal with things uh, related to regulatory compliance as well as cybersecurity to assure that there was no um, leaching and there was no piggybacking off the bandwidth in order to uh, open up uh, potentials for sabotage or for uh, money laundering. And also to make sure that there were appropriate uh, uh, protocols put into place to secure against any sort of inappropriate access and or any sort of co-mingling that might be connected to inappropriate material, uh, including inappropriate material that may um, have a uh, disparaging influence on young people. And so then the concepts about how to engage young people around that kind of technological development would need to be correlated with the actual implementation of the technology and with the securing of the network that was involved with the actual creation of that particular app and its deployment. The understanding, the hope was that it could be uh, accessible to anybody. The app or this concept of the app could be accessible to anybody. The problem uh, I've been encountering is that it needs to actually be verified and grounded in secure and official processes that understand it as a distinct process separate from other kinds of schemes. And that's why it's important to uh, identify what the, the points of uh, potential uh, sabotage are and how there are things that need to be distinctly uh, d identified and distinctly uh, secured outside of its circulation and other kinds of modalities. Uh, same information that is accessible to certain kinds of investment paradigms or shall we say investment firms is also the same kind of information that at least until uh, the beginning of uh, September of 2019, uh, 2019 was mandated to be publicly accessible to everyone. And that was the kind of information combined with whatever the specific entities that would be involved would understand would need to be uh, uh, made available or could decide would be made available in order to serve their purposes um, in order to move forward on it successfully. Now, do I believe it's been appropriated? Yes, I do. Do I believe the ideas around that have been stolen? Yes, I do. I believe that people that were spying on me and that were hacking me took those business ideas and appropriated them and used them in other manners that they were not meant for, including in derivative uses that have to do with the sex economy. And part of Spacehawk LLC was specifically and directly addressing the electronic aspects of sexual exploitation and the particular political paradigm that has allowed for the normalization and legitimization of the commercial sex economy. Uh, I personally do not agree with the commercial sex economy in any way, shape, or form. And the understanding was that the technology that I was uh, trying to work with and the uh, elements I was trying to engage would, not, would be ones that would not need to have any access to or any use of 
intentionally commercialize sexual activity, including in electronic or cyber uh, uh, form, and would also be able to be used without ha anybody feeling like they were obligated to participate in that. If you decide you want to engage in some sort of private perusal of digital information that has erotic or pornographic references, there's plenty of precedent that is discussed and determined what are boundaries around those considerations. But if we start talking about imposing upon people a mandate that in order for them to be able to engage in any sort of technology, including the digital realm, including uh, the digital currency, which is not necessarily a cryptocurrency, and including anything related to electronic banking, and or being able to access databases and to allow for comp compilation and central uh, compilation and uh, uh, creation of uh, materials based upon access to that information. If there's a requirement that you see to and accept processes of uh, commercialized sexuality and or pornography or erotic imagery being underwritten into it, then that is absolutely a constitutional violation. And not only that, it has other serious, serious uh, concerns associated with it, especially in connection with criminal activities that can be aided and abetted with those kinds of with those kinds of mandates. And so this is part of what the struggle has been in terms of being able to successfully launch that aspect of what would have been uh, Spacehawk LLC's uh, um, information moving forward. Now, what does this have to do with some other things that Spacehawk LLC has identified themselves as being connected to? Well, let's talk about gas and oil. How much water is used in gas and oil? Let me ask you another question. How much water is used in fracking for gas and oil? Let me ask you another question. How much do water systems, including public water systems, where water is supposed to be free to the consumer or there is supposed to be a particular concept of what is an appropriate rate structure, for either the municipalities to use the water or for individual consumers to use the water. How much are those water systems impacted by the use of water in fracking with the gas and oil sector? And it's absolutely 100% relevant to Spacehawk LLC. And so that's why networking with people in the gas and oil sector is very important. It's also why assuring that abuse of derivative processes and abuse of concepts of some sort of technological uh, relationship with any sort of alleged energy transfer that or transformation that may use digital uh, records, uh, including a concept that I've heard about called the digital duplicates, which is not, so far as I know, a uh, copyrighted process in terms of the word digital duplicates, um, but that also does call into question other problems that have been existing for a long time concerning theft of people's intangible uh, property, intellectual property, and how that is something that we need to distinguish between our relationship with ourselves as potential participants in the economy and the polity, and how we also may or may not have been involved in processes where we were previously defrauded and were put into a situation where we were told that something was available for free under fraudulent pretenses with an understanding that they were giving us something for free when it came to actual verifiable payment of monetary transactions that would then have to be recorded and potentially taxed, or whether we didn't have to pay money, but there was some implication or insinuation that we would be obligated to pay with our intangible property which could also include work products that would otherwise be something that we would be using in our business. And so then we get into a situation of potential allegations of corporate espionage. These are very serious matters, but this is why you have to deal with it and to be as forthright about it as possible. And also understand that even if you are an incorporated person and even if you are somebody that's an individual person, we all have a right to due process. And as a person... If I'm subjected to criminal activity, I also have a right to due process. So these things to me do not appear to be at all inconsistent. Nobody has ever given me any summons. But what has happened is that there has been misrepresentations of factors and kinds of property or assets that have been allowed to be made available for considerations of the implications 
of what it takes to move forward on certain kinds of legal matters, as well as to represent oneself as having achieved certain goals in their business endeavors. And this is something that's still ongoing. I, uh, I hope that you all have a good day, and I look forward to talking with you further in the future.